Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at our first emergencies that can happen to you. And now uh, we're going to be taking a look at what happens if your engine fails after you've already left the ground and uh, you put yourself in a situation where you need to quickly recover the airplane. So for the purposes of our little flying today, uh, we're going to over here at Westover Air Force Base. Uh, this is runway 23. It's big enough to launch intercontinental bombers, so it should be good enough to practice this one. So what we're going to do first is we're going to simulate an engine failure immediately following takeoff. Now there's a couple different ways uh, you can try to recover from this one but generally the safest method you're going to be using is to quickly push the nose back down, get close to the ground, and then suck your last bit of energy out to go ahead and safely uh, flare the airplane into a landing. Uh, one of the things you want to remember when you're doing any of these particular operations is it's always easier to practice in the simulator, but obviously if this comes up in the real world, do what you got to do in order to safely operate the plane. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my flaps are in the opposite position on this nice long runway. I'm going to go ahead and kill the parking brake, give it full power, and let's get ripping down the runway here. Now we're assuming everything was running fine, you know, we're just kind of full power. Obviously, if we had an engine failure at this time, the safest thing to do would be to pull the throttle back and then go ahead and uh, deploy full braking as appropriate. Now, of course, if we uh, left the ground, uh, different issues, different issues. So we'll simulate that. Aircraft is up while we start climbing. You know, everything's looking perfectly fine and we have an engine failure. So go ahead and push the nose down, get close to the ground. And then you're just going to go ahead and uh, do your regular flare here. Now, in this case, I've got uh, plenty of energy to spare, so this wasn't too much of a process at all to safely put this thing down on the ground. Nice. And we are back down. we got to hold the brakes real quickly there. Go ahead and bring us to a complete stop. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens if you don't do that carefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly reset everything. All right, now let's go ahead and give it a try. So this time what we're going to try to do is uh, use a different instinct. So instead of immediately nosing over, we're going to try to uh, keep the airplane flying or even try to get ourselves to a glide speed of about 60 knots or so. All right, and get ourselves accelerating. Looks like an absolutely lovely day to be experimenting with engine failures here. Up to speed, up to speed. We need about 55 knots. Lift up the front wheel. The aircraft is airborne. We're going to put ourselves at about 7.5 degrees, about 75 knots, and engine failure. Now let's say uh, we want to sit here and go, oh, we want to find a nicer spot on the runway. So we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of hold our normal 60 knots. We're going to start floating down. We're going to start floating down. Lift that nose up. Fortunately, we're very lightweight. And we are able to put this thing on the ground fairly smoothly. Uh, the nice thing with this aircraft is it has a spectacularly low wing loading. So if we ran into a situation where, um, you know, we were a little bit heavier in airplanes, so like a twin, uh, we would have been in a lot of trouble. But fortunately, like I said, this is a relatively low drag aircraft. Obviously, for a glider, it'd be a little bit different. So now let's go ahead and reset things and uh, take a look at what happens if you have an engine failure immediately following rotation. All right, so now things get a little different. So now instead of having all that wonderful room underneath us, what happens if the engine fails as soon as we leave the ground? Fortunately for us, the biggest problem we'd have with that is being able to keep the nose into the air. But keep in mind, since you'd be so close to a stall, if you let the nose come down quickly, you're gonna end up basically porpoising, which is gonna put you in a bad spot real fast. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing a ribbon. Again, we're gonna simulate that immediately after the aircraft leaves the ground. Now, I've done this one in the real world a few times, and I gotta say, that nose is tremendously heavy when it's just you pulling on the controls. All right, about 55 knots. Gonna go ahead and pull the nose up, and the engine fails. Push the nose down, back wheels down, up, and just safely put yourself right back down on the ground. Wow, this thing really likes to float. And we are safely down. So as you can see, it's uh, not too, too bad, but it's something you want to practice, especially with heavier aircraft. Because like I said, with that increased wing loading, it becomes very, very dangerous to try to hold that nose up. Now we're going to take a look at a slightly more dangerous scenario. Now what happens if we've taken off and we've got ourselves a pretty good amount of altitude and then the engine fails? If there's no runway available for us, uh, we have to get a little bit more creative. So in this particular case, uh, we're going to take a look at what they call the impossible turn. So the impossible turn is a 180 degree turn that will put you back on the ground from which you came. Now keep in mind, um, you do whatever you need to do to safely land the plane. No matter what happens, you just want to make sure that you get there, like I said. So let's go ahead and give ourselves full throttle here. And we're going to go ahead and do a standard takeoff. All right, everything's looking pretty good. It's a sunny day. Apparently, I really need to not fly this airplane because every time I've tried to leave the ground, it's just been bad luck this entire week. <laughs> All right, 55 knots. I'm going to go ahead and bring the nose up. 
So when you're practicing the impossible turn, uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to always give yourself plenty of room in order to practice this. And generally, you can work yourselves at about a thousand feet above ground level and then slowly make your way downwards until you find yourself at an altitude that seems most appropriate. In this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and use a thousand feet, which is going to put us at 1200 feet ASL. Keep in mind at higher altitudes, like if you're in the middle of the Rocky Mountains or something along those lines, uh, this is going to get more complicated. Making things a little exciting for us is account the, uh, the fact that we have a fairly strong headwind right now, which is actually slowing us down. When we turn this aircraft around, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where we're going to have a tailwind, which is going to make things extra complicated. I mean, you're going to have to come in extra slow when you actually come down to the ground. Now, making egregious uses of any sort of slips or any sort of action that you have at your disposal is going to be critical for the safety of the flight here. All right, that's 1,000 feet, which puts us 800 feet AGL. We want to get up to 1,200 feet. And we're going to go ahead and fail the engine. All right, let's do it. All right, first things first, we want to build up some energy. You don't want to just go full power here. We just need a little bit of energy before we can start a turn. Remember, the more aggressive the turn that we fly, the more energy we're going to suck out of the airplane. Get all sorts of angry warnings. I'll go ahead and put them to rest. All right, pretty good. We've got plenty of energy left. Plenty of energy left. Don't put your gear down. Don't put your flaps down until you guarantee that you're going to safely land. I'm going to put down one notch of flaps. Go ahead and slip the plane a little bit. Yeah, we're slipping very aggressively here. Get ourselves close to the ground. And we are down. Okay, keep in mind you have a tailwind now, so be very, very, very careful. Pull back all the way, maximum braking. And the aircraft is safe. And that is your impossible turn. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the variation of the impossible turn if we don't have quite that much altitude. All right, so now we're going to recreate things, but uh, we're going to complicate them just a little bit. We're going to do a standard takeoff like we did, but we're not going to quite have the amount of altitude that we had last time. So let's see if we can find a solution to this that will work effectively here. Give it full throttle as usual. I'm just going to do our standard takeoff. Everything seems to be running smoothly. I don't think we have any engine problems today. Again, this is uh, we've done this a few times this morning. I lift the nose up. We start climbing up. Everything's feeling pretty good. We're cruising again. This is why it's so important to get yourself to your VY speed quickly, so you have plenty of room to work with. And engine failure. All right. As always, we're going to put our nose down. We're going to try to find somewhere safe to land. In this particular case, uh, we're not going to be able to make it uh, turn to 180 here. So uh, we're going to have to improvise. I'm going to hold about 60 knots there. It looks pretty good. Again, don't touch your flaps or your landing gear until we get a little bit closer. Push that nose down. Push that nose down. Again, anything counts at this point. Just don't hit anybody. There's the stall warning horn. And we are down. I'm going to watch out for those lights. And that is another variation. Again, anything you need to do in order to safely get the airplane back into the ground is the most critical thing that you must do. So hopefully this video is helpful and inspires you to go ahead and uh, try out a couple variations on this thing. Obviously, the shorter the runway and the less altitude you have underneath you, the more exciting things start to get. But that's also why it's so much fun. Enjoy.